So uh, again, that's a complicated mechanism. So as you're reviewing that, if you get stuck, you can always just go through this right-hand column on the bottom of page one. We've gone through all the steps. Again, these two that are asterisks are usually done together over here. Um, and we talked about how it's most convenient to show the second nucleophile leaving as if it was kicked off by the pi bond forming from the carbonyl, and then our product is an aldehyde ketone. Now, the reason I like to put it like this side by side is that you can see that this really is the reverse of this. Every step on the right really is the reverse of the left. So here, on the left-hand column, we start with carbonyl oxygen protonating. Well, here we have carbonyl oxygen deprotonating. Here we have the nucleophile attacking the carbonyl carbon, breaking the pi bond. Well, on the right-hand side, we have the nucleophile leaving the carbonyl carbon and the pi bond forming. Every single step so here is just the reverse. reverse just right. think of the original one and then yeah. However, it's so complicated that you might actually have to write down the forward reaction so you can see what the reverse steps are. Because it, it, people tend to get confused if they try to reverse the steps in their head. But I put them next to each other on the, on the uh, handout so you can kind of meditate how each step here really is the reverse of the forward reaction. Okay. Okay, um, do you feel comfortable with that mechanism for the reverse reaction, or should we do another example? We can do another example, but we, can we do the one that he told us to do? From his, it's pretty much the same, just now it's a cyclic. So Excellent, yeah, that would be a great example. Let me uh, take a look at this for a second. Okay,
pretty fast progress on that. So uh, let's see, we started by protonating. Uh, the purpose of this first protonation was to make this a better leaving group. What's one of the factors that is stabilizing this carbocation here? Resonance. Yeah, so again, your instructor might have drawn this like this, showing the lone pair kicking this off. But mm -hmm. we didn't show it that way. Then the water came in, and then we showed the water kicking off the alcohol. And the two alcohols left as part of a single molecule here, because we started with the cyclic ketone. So we ended up with our diol. Good. Uh, so yeah, what type of uh, starting material is this? Uh, cyclic uh, ketone. Yeah, and so, so when we reverse that, we get a ketone. OK, good. You got it. All right. Let's do one more example without the mechanism. Let's just draw the product without showing the mechanism. Uh, because just, uh, just like with the Ford reaction, it's important to know how to do this without the mechanism because the mechanism is so long. So you saw that there would be two equivalents of alcohol, and you did not think that they would be attached to each other. So that's good, uh, because we're not starting with a cyclic molecule here. So they have two separate alcohols, and you use numbers to make sure that you were not adding or dropping carbons. That's all very good. What type of functional group is this? A ketone. Yeah, and again, we can see it's really a, also a hidden carbonyl. A hidden carbonyl, because we're able to turn it into a carbonyl here. Again, the thing to watch out for, hidden carbonyls generally occur when you have a carbon with bonds to two elect with two bonds to electronegative atoms. If you have a carbon with two bonds to electronegative atoms, that's the general pattern for a hidden carbonyl. And how do you reveal a hidden carbonyl? Hydronium. You can reveal those hidden carbonyls with hydronium. And it's good to know the mechanism for that, but uh, in many cases you want to be able to write the product without the mechanism. 